very necessary. Thank you for being a part of the family talk. And uh, of course, Nan Andrea Odubi Teke will be here tomorrow to have a full family talk with the Tekes. Now it's time for the Power Solutions. Every Monday, we bring to you an opportunity to discuss the way we can fix the power problems of our dear country, Nigeria. And Power Solutions, you know, comes up every Monday at this time. We bring experts for their opinions and, uh, of course, to, to give us the scorecard of what they're doing in their little corner or big corner, depending on where they find themselves and, and how or what they're doing to fix this power problem, which is, of course, uh, a national problem, of course. Uh, every Nigerian will attest to that. So today we have yet another beautiful guest. Usually you would hear me talk and then Weba would just, uh, you know, you know, come in and, 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 and of course, uh, you know, by now we would have said something, Collins. So Collins, uh, what happened on Saturdays? You're not hearing that because Weba is not in the studio. But, you know, he's always kind. He has a beautiful way of just making things really sweet by always sending me a beautiful lady to join me on the show. The last time it was Jade. At this time we have yet another amazing lady to join me co-host this uh few minutes on radio together to discuss power solutions uh, her name is frances not francis frances with an e because she told me if i called her francis you wouldn't respond to that right frances yes i said that <laughs> good to have you got it right yeah i, yeah. I mean i had to <laughs> deliberately get it right how are you i'm well i'm happy to be here honored you know, so, I hear your voice on radio all the time, so it's good to see me. in real life and hear that it's actually your voice. Yeah, it is. It's not, it's not a pretend. It is indeed. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you what, what you think about what you heard and what you saw. I don't want to go into that. Just, you know, I know. Because <laughs> before, because anytime I go into that, I always get disappointed. People are like, I thought you were a big man. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. It's crazy. Mommy, good to see you. I mean, you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. So we hit the ground running because we do have yet another interesting guest joining us on the show today. Uh, I don't know if Francis want to do us the honor to, you know, bring this amazing guest on. But um, yes, before you do that, I would like to bring the listener up to speed on what we are talking about specifically. And then uh, we get our guest to come on and uh, we start this conversation full effect. Now, we would be asking you today at some point on the show to share with us your power experience. I mean, what you're experiencing as a person regarding power. Is there power supply in your neighborhood? Do you think that um, a lot needs to be done with regards to that in your neighborhood? Um, we would we'll have you talk to us about that uh, as you proceed on the show. Because next week on Power Solutions, we'll have that as our major focus. Today, we're looking at building and financing renewable energy solutions. And we do have our guest seated. He is uh, James Shoita, Head of Business Development cross board uh cross boundary energy cross boundary energy cross that's right so he joins us live uh, via skype on the show today good morning to you good morning good morning James. great Collins. great francis how are you i'm well and you how's kenya oh it's great it's great awesome. lovely weather here as always awesome it's a pleasure to have you on the show um we have a few questions for you but nothing too too lengthy um, so I, I guess the, one of the first questions I can go ahead with the first. Yeah, absolutely. Right? All right. So one of the first questions we have, I mean, you have a background in um, nuclear energy or electrical engineering. Um, so we wanted to know a bit more about um, your background and and your professional journey and how you found yourself as the head of development at Cross Boundary. Yeah, sure. So my professional and personal experience are quite tied together. Um, as you mentioned, I studied electrical engineering um, and I went into nuclear power thereafter. Um, I did a mix of auditing and consulting for the company that I worked with. And what we would do is we would go to the nuclear plants in the U.S., evaluate their performance, and then the performance uh, evaluation that we gave them determined their insurance rates. Um, it's a really cool industry. You get to see some of the biggest machines in the, in the world. Uh, but as I was going through that time in my first job, um, I saw the need for sustainable energy more broadly, and especially in Africa, uh, which really took me back to the time um, as I'm also Nigerian, um, living and visiting Nigeria, uh, we would go weeks without power. Nepal just takes away the power for weeks and, <laughs> and it was, yeah, exactly. So it was really cool as like a weight loss plan as a little chubby kid. But, <laughs> 
world that we should be living um, on the continent, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to help with that transition for me to really play a part in improving the power situation on the continent, uh, I went to business school and then worked for Boston Consulting Group in Johannesburg, South Africa, awesome. uh, where I really learned business and how to make this work. Um, and so right after that, I joined Cross Boundary Energy. I've been here for the past three years um, and currently head of business development. Awesome. And yeah, I'm super proud of what we've achieved so far. Well, beautiful. Quite an impressive journey and story, if you ask me. And uh, uh, that brings Thank me to, to my next question, which will be a bit more specific. Because, um, uh, yeah, uh, tell us about your company, that, 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 that is Cross Boundary Energy. What, what exactly do you do? Yeah, so we started this company in 2015, uh, really out of humble beginnings out of South Sudan, where we were in, um, doing some advisory work and we saw that many of our clients were paying exorbitant amounts for energy um, using mostly diesel. And so we wanted to go out and solve two problems for them. So one is access to clean, cheap power. And then number two is access to financing. Um, and so we brought those two things together um, to create cross-boundary energy. Um, as I said, we started in 2015. We, we first started with a $10 million fund um, and that was to really prove the concept of this industry. Uh, and in 2020, we closed that first fund um, and returned 15% uh, uh, returns to our investors. And off the back of that, we raised a new fund. Um, we've secured 40 million um, so far, and we're looking to, wow. to raise another 60 million in the next few months. Um, and so our portfolio today stands at over 70 million. Um, and just to give you a sense of the type of folks that we work with, uh, we in our portfolio includes Unilever, um, Heineken slash Nigerian breweries, they're in Ibadan, um, Actis um, at the Jabi Lake Mall in Abuja, Abian Bev and Diageo. Wow. Wow. That's quite impressive. Very, very. Yeah. Um, so it also brings me Thank to you. my next question. I mean, and you've um, already alluded to the fact that uh, when it comes to energy or power, especially in Africa, we know that it's expensive, it can be inefficient, it can be unreliable. Um, but I'm, I'm understanding that your solutions typically, um, so it states, uh, saves clients up to 30% um, in electricity costs and also requires zero capex. I'm sure our listeners would love to know more about that. Yeah, so that's exactly right. Um, what we're doing is we finance the entire um, energy solution that they need up front. So they don't have to pay anything up front. Hmm. Um, and we also need to make sure that it saves them money. Um, as, as, as we know, there is a cost of doing any type of business. So we need to make sure that we are providing them with cheaper power than they otherwise would pay if they continued down the path that they are currently on. Um, and so what that means is like um, the 30% specifically per determines on their mix of energy, whether they're using 100% grid or 100% diesel or something in between or mix. Um, and so if a client is using 100% diesel, we can save them over 50%. Uh, but if they're using 100% grid connection, we can save them about half that because grid is, tends to be cheaper. Wow. They're really interesting. Lagos, Nigeria. It's 11.40. You're listening to Nigeria Info 99.3. We're live on Power Solutions. And uh, I have Frances by my side. Uh, we're having this conversation with uh, the um, head of business development, if I'm correct, uh, for Cross Boundary, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, Energy, which, of course, it's one company that has a solution that helps typically saves clients up to 30 percent electricity in costs i mean that's that's a lot and that's what he just talked about and we are indeed looking at uh, you know uh, building and financing renewable energy solutions so uh, if you have a question for him you could be a part of it you know how to do that on our socials go ahead we're streaming live you could also be a part of that uh, but my next question to you is um you know which your company uh, we know that you have presence in about six african countries right how would you describe the progress made with renewable energy so far? Yeah, so the industry is uh, still relatively nascent. Um, if you look at other places where it's been around for a, a bit longer. Um, and as I said, we started in 2015. And since then, 
we signed the first commercial uh, power purchase agreements um, in, in Ghana, Kenya, and Sierra Leone. And since then, many other players have also entered into the market. So it's growing pretty quickly, um, but we have only scratched the surface. Um, we're seeing this market um, as an annual value of over 70 billion per year. And as I mentioned, that's that's only a small slither of our portfolio. So there's still quite a bit of headroom um, for for us in the entire industry to really go after and to really try to make this shift towards sustainable energy. Yeah, and I, I even noticed or um, read, read a bit about you building the largest power plant in Ibadan here in Nigeria. Um, some awesome insights there and some of the strides you all are making. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about like the process in terms of how you deliver power. Um, so when we look at like the um, long-term agreements that you have, like the power purchase agreements, um, I, I believe our listeners would want to know more about that and, and, and what that entails. Sure, sure. Um, so it might be most helpful if I just take you through a uh, typical situation. Right. So let's say there's a steel ma manufacturer um, in Ibadan uh, who is facing expensive power. Um, we would realize this and we would say, okay, um, Mr. Client, we can save you 30% on your electricity costs uh, based on where you are, uh, your energy mix, um, and what type of products work for your specific business. Uh, and so we say, okay, we can we can give you that level of a discount to your current cost of power. Um, is that something that you're interested in securing for the long term? And if they are, then they sign with us for a long-term power purchase agreement, which reigns anywhere from 10 to 20 years. Um, and once they agree and we sign the contract, then Cross Boundary Energy will procure the equipment um, through our partners and they will build it. And then once it's operating, then and only then does the customer begin to start paying its bills uh, to us for the power that we're generating, which we guarantee to be cheaper than whatever alternative source of power that they have today. Okay. Well, interesting to know. Wow, Re really interesting. I mean, uh, I was hoping to probe further, but I know that the Jabi Lake Mall solar hybrid project uh, commissioned a year ago is one of the major projects developed by a cost boundary, right? And, and, and this is the first fully operational solar hybrid projects for a Nigerian mall. And, 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 of course, the, the uh, Honorable Minister of State for Power, uh, Gordi uh, uh, Jediagba, visited the project site in April and, and, and commended the level of work done. I, I mean, this is, these are not common happenings, as it were. It's, it's quite something to talk about. So tell us more about this particular project. Yeah, sure. Uh, it was definitely an, an honor to host the minister um, and glad to hear that he had a great time as well. Um, and yeah, so we we first uh, started discussing this project back in 2018, okay. Actus, um, but also realized previously Actus was, uh, is already a client of, of ours. Um, yeah. We, our first project in 2015, which is Garden City Mall in Nairobi, Kenya, um, is the first project that we've done, and it was also it's also a mall that's owned by Actus. Okay. Um, and so they were super keen to continue um, working with us. Um, and then as as well, it's also important to realize that that Actus is very sustainable sustainable focused uh, when it comes to their uh, mall operations and retail operations across the continent. In fact, uh, both of these malls uh, are LEED certified from the get-go. Um, so it's an important aspect for them. And so understanding that that we are both on the same wavelength when it comes to sustainability also made this project uh, go through more smoothly. And so we are providing them with cheaper, cleaner power and they're not paying for any of it up front. Mm. Yeah. I'd also like to mention uh, this project as well. Uh, we worked with one of our um, construction partners called Seventix. Um, and we were able to deliver this project on time and on budget, which, as you mentioned, was commissioned last year in the middle of the lockdown period. Um, so that was something uh, to be particularly proud of, given those challenges. You, you certainly have a lot of uh, success stories thus far. 
Um, I'm sure my colleague has the next question. Yeah, so, I mean, you've shared a bit of what you all have previously done, and um, I'm sure our listeners are eager to hear about the, the essentially, the cash money, the money, right? So what you all are planning on doing currently. Um, so I understand that um, you all have plans to deploy um, about $100 million um, dollars uh, of equity into into the commercial um, into the commercial sector. So we'd love to hear more about that. So this is meant to be over the course of three to four years. So what does that look like? What does it entail? And how how can we get involved? Yeah. So there's so there's two parts of this. One, you need to build a portfolio that you can deploy this capital into, and then as well, you need to raise the money. To, out, to, to give you that cash to pay for these projects. And so, as I mentioned earlier, we raised 40 million. Uh, we're looking to get another 60 in the next six months. And these finances are going are allowing us to scale our business. Um, as I mentioned, we first raised the first fund, which is about 10% of this current fund. Um, and that was to prove the concept. So now we're taking it to scale. Right. And so we've, we've expanded our team. We mentioned six countries that we're into now, but we're going to be expanding to at least four more countries before the end of the year awesome. and continue to build that portfolio so that we can have this hundred million in operational projects in the next few years. And I'm curious, no, go ahead. Oh, and I'm curious, um, are there any hot spots in Nigeria that you're particularly looking at um, doing um, business in or having solutions in? Yes, yes, several. Um, the the main ones are the economic centers, so Lagos, Abuja, but then as well the, the industrial centers. You have them in Ibadan, in Ama, etc. Um, really, where the industrial heart of the country is, right. those are the areas where those companies are using the most power, and and it's such a critical part of their business. They're running twenty four seven. Um, and they need to make sure that they're able to produce their widgets or services on time. Um, and because they're running uh, every single day of the year, that also aligns the sunlight that's coming every single day right. of the year. So they get to take the most advantage of the power that's being produced by the sun. Well, wow, beautiful. Now, my next question has to do with one of the biggest worries uh, most Nigerians you know, have, and even not Africans, when it comes to solar energies, uh, you know, uh, which has to do with sustainability, all right? Now, besides cutting energy costs, now the solar facility will cut the Jabi Lake Mall's reliance on uh, polluting diesel generators, right? And, and would also reduce carbon emissions by uh, over 13,000 carbon, uh, and, and I mean 13,000 tons, if you like. Uh, so, see, Many usually argue about this. How sustainable do you think the solar facility is? And, and will you ever need a generator? You know, there's those that worry of solar. You know, there's, there's just some mindset about solar not being, <laughs> you know, as strong, as sustainable as, you know, power generated somewhere else. You need to, you know, demystify this and also answer the question of um, whether you're ever going to rely on generators again. Yeah, sure. Uh, so this solar facility is sustainable. Um, its source of energy that it's producing the electricity from comes directly from the sun. So from that aspect, it is very sustainable. Um, and how we think about, uh, and specifically for Jabu Lake Mall, um, this the amount of solar that we're generating will cover uh, about 16 to 20 percent of their total power consumption. So from the get-go with this system, they are reducing their carbon emissions by that 13,000 tons you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and and will, will they ever need a generator? My hope is that in the future, it becomes less and less needed. Um, as, as I said, we're only covering a portion of their total energy cost today, but I also see a future where we can do more where we can increase the capacity and add uh, battery storage so that uh, we can use that power that's being generated from the sun during the day and use it more at night. Um, and so as we continue to increase that percentage of power that's coming from renewables, eventually, uh, hopefully, we won't need generators. Wow. Yeah. It is a journey, and it is going to take some time. Exactly. But as the costs come down, 
solar is already the cheapest form of power, but then as, as uh, battery storage starts to come down in other forms, we can tack those on and really give them a 100% solution. All right. Your next question, I hope you're going to answer in like 30 seconds because you need to run in the, for a break. But I'm sure Francis uh, has got that, uh, Frances has got that covered. <laughs> yeah, so quickly, I, you've already mentioned um, projects in Nairobi in terms of the Garden City Mall. And then we've also touched on the Nigerian Brewery solar, solar plant. Um, just any other information you feel our, our listeners would find useful in terms of what those projects have produced and, and how it's going now? Yeah, yeah. So the number one thing to remember is that these these projects have really demonstrated that it is possible for businesses to make the switch to cheaper and cleaner power. Right. You don't really have to compromise anymore. Um, and through demonstrating that, uh, the hope is that more and more companies start to do that. The projects that you mentioned, um, these these businesses have have stepped up to the front and been more of the pioneers um, to to demonstrate to the rest of the business community on on, on the continent that it's possible. Um, and so that's 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 the message that 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 I would put forward. Um, you are listening are to your number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. We Entertainment, in partnership with Riverside Productions, bring you this comedy blockbuster. Deeply satisfying taste of the two exotic range of delicious fruit blends. Two exotic nectar. I love the taste. Now available at Food Corner. As part of efforts to improve the local content participation in the oil and gas sector, the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, NCDMB, is inviting you to the third edition of the Nigerian Oil and Gas Opportunity Fair, NOGOF 2021, with a the theme, Leveraging Opportunities and Synergies for Post-Pandemic Recovery of the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry. This event brings together major players across the upstream, midstream, and downstream sectors of the oil and gas industry, including government agencies, industry regulators, showcasing opportunities in the industry, and present the availability in-country capacity. Date, Tuesday 25th through Wednesday 26th May 2021. Time, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. Venue, virtual. Nog of 2021 promises a great virtual experience combining current technology to deliver collaboration between thousands of key players in the oil and gas industry, which will help grow businesses by exposing opportunities for quick decision making. To participate, log on to www.ncdmbnogov.org. Nog of 2021, presenting opportunities in the oil and gas industry. 99.3 Nigeria Info, your number one station for talk. Let's talk. Welcome back. We are wrapping up now quickly on the Power Solutions. Apologies indeed to our guests and apologies to the listener who was, you know, following the thoughts uh, of our guests as we had to go on that necessary break, uh, which, of course, just came abruptly. Apologies for that. Now, I would have you uh, conclude your thoughts, Shoitan, and um, we, we wrap up this conversation as we, uh, in the dying minutes of this uh, lovely Power Solutions hour, <laughs> as it were. So sorry for that break. So, so you're talking you're talking about you know what else we need to know about uh, concerning the, uh, the, the, the the projects the and projects and what they have achieved you know thus far just to pick it up from there and wrap up 
Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so the point I just wanted to highlight is that uh, these these first projects that you mentioned, Garden City, mm. uh, Nigerian Bridges, Ibadan, um, Jabi Lake Mall, these are the first ones uh, that are coming online to okay. demonstrate that it is possible, we can do it cheaper, and you don't have to make compromises to get uh, cleaner power. Um, and so these, these more and more of these will be coming online. And so I encourage other businesses to consider um, and make the switch. All right, well said. Well, I wish we could squeeze in one last question. Yeah. You know, our time is really fast spent, but you know, uh, you, you must be working currently on a number of projects. So in, in 30 seconds, would you like to uh, tell yeah. us, you know, how can the listener, you know, um, you know, what, someone who's interested in digital solution, the one you just talked about, and um, is there any other project you're working on that the listener should know about? How can they contact you? And um, yeah, those are the two things I would like you to wrap up with in like 20 seconds. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we're looking to expand into several new geographies this year, including Madagascar, Mozambique, um, Somalia and Uganda. Um, so you can look for further projects that we'll be announcing there. Um, and how you can get in touch if you're interested, you can reach out directly to me. So that's james.shoyatan at crossboundary.com. Shoyatan is spelled S-H-O-E-T-A-N. Or you can visit our website at uh, www.crossboundary.com slash energy. And uh, you can reach out to us directly and we'll make it work for you. Beautiful to know awesome. thank you so much for speaking with us and this is where we wrap it all up right here in the studio uh, you'll be here next week will you possibly it's okay. a pleasure having you james thanks for your time thank you thank james. You, for <laughs> you both take care well wow, fantastic so if, if you ever wondered if solar energy uh, so renewable energy does work you've heard it now i mean it's it's working and uh i mean the highest at uh, the highest level as it were this is a lot of hope because i know solar is cleaner you know it's safer and it's just, it's just beautiful. And Nigeria and the rest of Africa just does need this more of this. Yeah, I mean, it's working, mm. no doubt. And also, there's a lot of support in the industry, as you've heard, mm. to essentially solarize and mm. make power more su sustainable here in Nigeria and ac across Africa. That's right. Thank you so much, Frances, for, I mean, standing in for uh, Weber. And Frances, your second name is Frances... I wonder if Uduku. Uduku. Yeah. Ah, beautiful name. I like. All right. Thank <laughs> nice you. Nice to meet you, Colin. Same here. All right, guys. That's the much we have on the show. News coming up now. Wemimo Adewuni, I presume, is uh, on standby to bring you Africa's most authentic news bulletin. This is where we say bye bye. God bless you. And God bless Nigeria. Cheers. Bye. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.